everyone. Welcome to Boot to Boom, the number one live streaming show taking you from bootstrapping to booming. We're here every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern to get your PayPal popping, your business booming, and your life and relationships to explode. I'm your host, Ava Laura, and this is my amazing co-host, Jessica. And we're really excited for another edition. We have a phenomenal, a phenomenal guest for you all. We're going to get a little bit into that in a moment. But before we do that, if you haven't already, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Go ahead and comment, share it out to the world. Anybody who is interested in business, has a business, needs some inspiration, needs some motivation, go ahead and share this out. All right. And let me go ahead and introduce to you my phenomenal co-host. Uh, Jessica is an experienced online business consultant that has over a decade in assisting SME business owners within the digital media sector. She is the editor of the Digital Feel Good magazine podcast and web series. I highly suggest that you check that out. Uh, throughout her 25 years of practice, she has worked with well-known Wall Street and Fortune 500 companies, television celebrities, healthcare providers, leading public figures, and community leaders. And one of her greatest achievements has been to actively participate in the leading successful negotiation of a multi-million dollar partnership. So uh, now I have the privilege of uh, introducing you all to our founder and also my co-host, Ava Laura. So Ava Laura is an internationally celebrated intuitive consultant and life coach who takes her clients from whole to wholeness in their life, relationships, and business. She guides them through a powerful healing process that helps them discover who they are, who they wish to be, and how to get there. If now's the time for you to live a freedom-focused life, detox yourself of limiting beliefs that no longer serve you, and create an unrecognizable reality, then Ava Laura is the guy you've been waiting for. So you can get your consultation today by emailing avalora at avalora.com. <laughs> I make it really simple, y'all. Everything is avalora. <laughs> Except for boots boom. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon with intention. Brandon with That's intention. it. That is it. Yeah, so Jessica, so what do we want to talk about today? I thought this was a very interesting topic and very near and dear to my heart. And certainly you all will also hear a part of our, um, our story for our guest today as well. All right, so now we are going to uh, go and roll into our popping topic, which is, I think, an important one. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about how to know when it's time to transition. Uh, so Ava Laura has her own personal story about this, and we're going to go into that in just a moment. But our guest also has a way, has uh, some information on how he also transitioned in his uh, career and, and then also kind of pivoted and started his own business because of it. So Ava, if you could share a little bit about uh, how you transitioned, what was your experience? Yeah, so most of you know, if you've been watching this a while, that my background is actually in uh, counseling uh, mental health and social work. Uh, I actually got my bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in social work from Howard University. And that was always my dream. I always wanted um, to help people, always wanted to provide counseling. That was something that I did naturally. Um, and it was just, it, it was something that when I decided that this was what I was gonna go to school for, I knew counseling was it. And, but what happened for me was when I eventually got into the mental health field after I got my, uh, uh, my, uh, graduate degree, you know, all excited, you know, when you do something that's a personal, uh, your sort of a personal goal for you, you get really excited and you think that everybody else is going to be excited too, you know, so I thought I was just going to heal the world. Everybody was going so excited and everything was going to change and shift. And of course, that's not what happened. People didn't really care. Uh, but I got a really, really good job out, you know, out of grad school. I was the program director at an outpatient mental health clinic. I was working directly with the founder and the CEO of the company and I was excited because I really thought that I was going to change the world I thought I was gonna make an impact I thought here I am working with directly with the CEO so part of my vision would also be a part of the company as well and quite frankly that's just not what happened um, I what I really found was that each and every day um, I was getting more and more dissatisfied. I was unhappy. I was depressed. I was feeling like I wasn't making a difference. And I felt like I was simply just helping people to maintain their dysfunction. 
I realized that the system was not really set up to help people heal. It wasn't set up to help people grow. It wasn't help people set up to help people change. It was simply there to help them to just get by with what they've already had, the Band-Aid effect. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to heal. I wanted to change lives. You know, I, I wanted to, when I work with my clients and I tell them from jump, when we work together, the sole purpose of this journey is permanent behavioral change. That is what we do this for. I'm not playing around with you. This is not, you know, you spend your money, come see me once a week, get some good advice, and then go on about your business. It's so that you will change. And so here I am in a system that is not set up to help people change. And that was not going to work for me. That wasn't going to work for me. And so I knew that I had to make a personal change myself, but the thing was, I didn't even know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to get help from because here's the thing, and this is the reality. And a lot of you watching this have probably experienced this as well. You know, a lot of times when you get to a certain place in your profession, you're doing well, you got the degrees, you're making the money, um, you know, you got your house, you got your car, you're married, your kids, all these things. For all intents and purposes to the outside world, you look like you're happy, you got it all together, you're successful because these are the ways that we define success. Mm -hmm. So when you go to somebody and say, well, I'm not fulfilled, they're like, well, who the hell cares about fulfillment? You got a paycheck, right? You, you know, you, you, you got a house, you know, you make your money, you can travel, you got your red bottoms, right? Like you have all these things, so you should be happy, Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's just like, what's wrong with you fulfilled? What, what, what's that? Um, but <laughs> That was certainly what my parents said, like, what's wrong with you? You know, but that was really it. I was not fulfilled. I was not happy. And I knew that I could not go on living like that, but I just didn't know what to do because, you know, I did everything that everybody told me to do. So I should have been happy. So I blame me. You know, I beat up on me. What's wrong with me for not being happy? Right? Like, cause this is how it's supposed to look. And so what happened was eventually I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. It was just too much. And I ended up going on this woman's retreat and I got back to soulful self-care as I call it, which, you know, I'll teach about, I talk about, I do, you know, um, a lot of talks about, um, you know, everywhere really. And the reason it's so near and dear to my heart is because it, it saved my life. You know, one of the things that I found is that when we need self-care the most is when we practice it the least. And I was so stressed out and so unhappy and so miserable. I was not taking care of myself. So when I finally got back to an environment that was specifically set up for me to do that, it was like, oh, now I remember who I am. Now I remember why I'm doing this. Oh, yeah. You know, like all the things that I sort of had forgotten because I was so stagnant and stuck were really just coming back to me. So I got back to doing the yoga and the meditating and the praying and, you know, just spending time with like minds and taking time out for me. Really, that's what it was. And in the midst of this retreat, what happened for me was I had an emotional breakdown. I literally found myself on my hands and knees crying out to God, like, I can't live like this anymore. I, I got to get out. I got to get out. Get me out. Like the freaking movie. Get me out. I had to get out. But I didn't, again, I didn't know what to do. Because, again, I'm living in society. I don't have this model. My parents, you go to school, you get your degree, you know, you get a job, and you stay at your job. That, that's what you do. And you collect your pension after 30 years. So I, you know, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Um, but what happened was I, you know, after eventually I kind of let it all out, you know, did my cleansing cry or ugly cry, mm -hmm. uh, left it all up to God. And um, I felt better. I felt better until I realized, of course, I was going to have to go right back to work on Monday morning. Uh, <laughs> I felt better temporarily yeah. and um, I got back to work on Monday and uh, my boss calls me into his office. He sits me down and he says, Hey, Valora, um, I need to talk to you about something. And I'm like, sure. What's up? What's going on? And he says, you know, I need to let you go. And I was like, wait, what? You need to who, what, where, what, huh? <laughs> you know, cause here I am classic overachiever. Perfection has never been fired from anything in my life. Mm -hmm. So I needless to say, ego was in shock. <laughs> so it was a shock. Ego did not take it very well. Um, but, you know, gradually spirit kicked in and just said, well, Ava Laura, what you complaining about? Why are you upset? This is what you prayed for. So what are you going to do about it? Yeah. What are you going to do about it? That was the transition. That was the decision. Because here's the reality. 
I had on the one hand, I could take the blue pill, go right back and get another job in social work. If y'all know anything about the social work field, it is not hard to get a job. <laughs> I had a master's degree. There's no shortage of people who need help. That, that was not hard. So, you know, I could take that safe route, go right back into the mix, go right back into the matrix, take that blue pill and do that. Or I could take the red pill and, you know, go into the path of the unknown, take the faith walk and venture out and, and start my own thing. Yeah. And that's what I ended up doing. That's what I did. And so that was back in 2005. I started Avalora's Healing Center. And I literally took this six-month healing sabbatical for myself first. I took six months and I did the work. Who am I? Why am I here? What is it that I can do that nobody else can do? What do I do better than anybody? What is it that, you know, just brings me alive, that makes me tick that I cannot do without? I did all of that work. I did the coaching. I did the counseling. All the degrees and certifications under my belt, the Reiki, the life coaching, the spiritual counseling, everything. I did all of that then. And, you know, and then I felt, you know, ready and prepared to open up Avalor's Healing Center. But I say all of that to say that, you know, when we're talking about transitioning, I was sort of forced into that transition. <laughs> that was not a transition of my choosing. Yeah. Right. However, I did choose when I had a decision to make because I could have gone right back into that field. Yeah. knowing that I was going to be unhappy, knowing that I was going to be unfulfilled, knowing that I was going to feel stuck and not make a difference, but I chose another route. Absolutely. So some of you all are not going to be, you know, as lucky or unlucky. I, you know, I say it now, it was lucky I was fired because it saved my life. Um, because I know that if I wasn't fired, I would have stayed longer than I needed to. I would have I overstayed my welcome. You know, when you at somebody's house and you just stay way too long and they're trying to kick you out, but you're not trying to leave. <laughs> I would have overstayed my welcome. So I was glad that I was kicked out. I needed that. So for some of you, you're not going to get kicked out. You know, you're going to still be there feeling miserable, feeling stuck, feeling depressed, and you're going to have a decision to make about what is it that you're going to do. And your decision might not necessarily mean that you start your own business. I mean, we focus on entrepreneurship here. That might not be your particular journey, but understand that you have options. You know, we live in this world that you have options. You don't have to just go ahead and get your degree and go to work and stay at a job that you hate for 30 years. You know, even if it's deciding that I want a job, I, I prefer that for myself, but what type of job do I want? What do I want that to look like? Do I want to work from home? Do I want to have to go into the office every day? What kind of office environment? Do what, what kind of culture? Do I want to dress casually? Do I want to have to dress up? You know, do I want travel? You know, all of these things like you get to think about and you get to map out. So understanding that you have options and you never have to stay stuck and something that is not working for you, that is not your um, reality, that you're not really making an impact. Because if you're not making an impact, if you're not serving, if you're not changing lives, what are you here for? Yeah. Absolutely. What are you here for? So I wanna say that because I think a lot of times people automatically feel like, oh, I gotta start my own business. You may not be ready to start a business and therefore watch Boot to Boom, you know, because that's, that's what we're here to do, help you to get ready for that. And if you have started a business, help to keep you in your business, right? Because not all businesses are successful. Um, so you might not be ready for that, but you know that you're ready for a change. You know you're ready for a change. That's when it's time to transition. When you really feel like, you know what, I'm not doing what I came here for. I had a specific purpose and I am not able to meet that purpose in this particular environment, that's when it's time to make a change. Yeah, love it. And I don't think I need to add anything to that. So <laughs> let's just move right on into the interview. <laughs> So you're going to hear a lot about, you know, our guest uh, journey as well, um, where he has an interesting story of transition too. And the truth is most people in entrepreneurship have transitioned at least once or twice or three times. So this is a huge part of entrepreneurship is transitioning and seeing when the writing is on the wall and not necessarily being forced out like I was, but making that conscious decision to go ahead and make that transition on your own. Welcome back everybody. And let's introduce you to our phenomenal guest today, Dr. Clarence Lee. 
Uh, Dr. Lee is a nationally celebrated author, international speaker, and CEO of C.M. Lee Jr. Companies, a personal development brand that conducts seminars on high performance and mental conditioning for teams, organizations, and for students. He holds a uh, biology uh, degree, actually, so I can't wait to hear his story, uh, from University of the Incarnate Word and degrees in medicine and business from Drexel University. He is a decorated war veteran. He served in the United States Air Force uh, for a 10-year assignment, and he regularly appears on uh, TV as a health expert. He's been featured on ABC, CBS, and Fox television news stations. So please join us in welcoming Dr. Lee. How are you doing today? Thank you for being on Boot to Boo. I'm, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. I'm excited to be on. So the first question, and I think it's obvious, you know, I always like to, you know, get into the story of our entrepreneurs, but you have a very interesting background in terms of, you know, your experience, your education, and then now your chosen, uh, you know, sort of business path. So can you just talk a little bit about kind of how you got started and, you know, sort of these transitions you've made? Right. Yeah. So um, my, my mom was a nurse, so she introduced me to medicine really early in life. So I always had this kind of vision that medicine was something that I wanted to do. I didn't know necessarily how I was going to do it. Um, but that's where the medicine part kind of came in. And so, um, you know, my story was one of, of having a lot of difficulty getting into medical school. You know, it took me five years to get into medical school wow. um, and uh, just applying and applying and applying and finally got the opportunity to uh, to get in. And um, in, in that time, I played basketball in undergrad, and so when I got accepted into medical school, my dad was a Marine, so I kind of always saw the difference between him and the rest of his siblings, and I said, oh, he's got an edge, and that's, that's a military, so I wanted that. Mm -hmm. So I joined the Air Force uh, after I got accepted into medical school. I took a scholarship for them, and, uh, and then once I finished medical school, I came out to become a flight surgeon. So uh, basically, it's the physician that's an aerospace medicine specialist. Um, and uh, so, yeah, then we're here today, but um, I, I'd probably say the baseline of all of it, uh, my inspiration to get into medicine was that I just wanted a platform to help people. And mm -hmm. as I started practicing medicine, I started to see some limitations in medicine as far mm -hmm. as how much time I had with the patient, how deep I could go. And then yeah. that's how I started to dive into my personal development work that I'm, that I'm doing today. Very interesting. And in that way, we have something in common in that my background is in social work. And it was the same thing. I saw so many limitations in the mental health, uh, social work field that, you know, I tell people all the time, instead of helping people to change and grow, I was just helping people to maintain their dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wasn't going to really be able to help people in that system. So I had to, you know, start my own business doing the work and, you know, really sort of being able to delve deep and, and get to the roots of the problem. So just like you, the personal development work, the healing work, because I found that that was sort of the missing link in the industry. Absolutely. Wow, so that's interesting. First of all, I just have to commend you for five times uh, for it, you know, taking you to get into med school. And because, you know, that, that also speaks to sort of the, the mind and the persistence of an entrepreneur, right? Because most right. people would have given up, you know, that maybe second time, that third right. time, <laughs> the fourth time. Yes. You know, like, this is not in the cards for me. This is, this is just not going to work. So, you know, how did you, like, what kept you going? Like, what is it about you that was just so persistent? and just so focused like you know what I'm just gonna do this this is gonna happen for me yeah I I think and I, I teach a lot about this I wrote my second book the title is persist how to beat the things that make us quit but um, I'm really really passionate about persistence and I think for me it was just the ability to continue to hold the vision um, I think as you go through life and you come up against obstacles many of us start looking to the left or looking to the right and have difficulty holding on to the vision because it seems like it might be impossible so for me uh, kind of the psychological piece was I just continued to tell myself it's only a matter of time. And I always believed within my, my heart that it was something that I was meant to do and that I could do. Um, and so I just told myself it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. And, and ultimately, I got the opportunity to get in. Wow. I love that. I love that. And, and I'm sure as, as an entrepreneur, you're finding that that is a necessary uh, mindset to have. It's, 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 it's absolutely critical. And I, I think it's, it's downplayed in society today um, of 
you know, this kind of ability to learn how to lose and learn how to take no's. And I think um, just because of our educational system is the, is the one thing that doesn't really embrace mistakes. It kind of encourages you not to make mistakes or to hide your mistakes. And, and then, uh, you know, the social media world where everybody's posting the highlights of their life thinking, you know, showing everything that's great. Um, I really think it's kind of a lost art of, 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 of knowing how to lose learning how to lose and learning how to continue to get up when you do lose. If you don't know how to lose, losing is going to beat you. Um, and as an entrepreneur, you're going to get no's, no, no, no. If you don't understand how to take a no, you, you're in the wrong game. No question about it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I could not have said it better than that. You know, yeah, say so fall down seven times, get up eight. Yeah. Right. Jessica, I know you're saying something, but we can't hear you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I have the sniffles, so I'm yeah. Um, so what is like your, I mean, you, it sounds like you've, you know, created a lot of success for yourselves, right? And I think for a lot of us yeah. in the general public and general society, you know, we have this goal of when you're young, that's all you hear. You're either going to be a doctor, a lawyer, or yeah. a basketball player, right? An entertainer of some sort, right? So what for you yep. kind right. of change for you to say, you know what, this isn't what I attain to as success. This is cool, but I think there's something else I want to go out for. What happened in your life or what transpired to make you make that decision? Yeah. So um, in my, my first book, I kind of told my story about, uh, you know, how I, was, how I grew up, but I think it, it really kind of started, I'm, I'm from the Midwest and the South and um, and, and the racial tension was, was kind of crazy in the eighties as it could, you see there's still stuff going on. And so for me, um, I got a lot of opposition in the educational sector for my teachers. People just didn't really expect a lot from me. Um, and that didn't really sit well with me because I had a mom and parents that told me I could do a lot. And so for me, I had to figure out who I was and what my identity was. And so I went and I read a lot about black history. I wanted to understand the people that I came from. I wanted to understand um, the, the obstacles that they overcame and understand that that was also in me. So I started to draw my identity from a lot of the stuff I read in books. So I love, I love books. So books kind of opened my mind to what was really possible for me. And so as a, as a black male, you know, I did have this opportunity to identify with the athlete or the hip hop star. But from books, even though I didn't necessarily have the mentors at a really, really early age, from books, I could also identify with, with lawyers, doctors, scientists. So for me, um, all of it was always on the table for me. That was always my identity once, once I started reading books and kind of broadening what I saw of myself. Yeah, I love that because you're absolutely right. I mean, I think one of the beauties of books, I mean, we talk about the importance of education and learning, but one of the beauties of books is that it exposes you to new worlds, you know, from wherever you are. You know, I'm a firm believer in travel, but not everybody can travel or will travel, but you can travel in a book. That's right. What were some of your favorite books? So I had some kind of big big kind of mentors. I call them virtual mentors, but um, Martin Luther King was one of the first ones that I really kind of gravitated to him. Um, I was always kind of like, a, I won't say nonviolent, but I was a, kind of like a peacemaker um, mm. all the time. And so I, I was really, not a fighter. No, I, yeah, I wasn't really a fighter. I mean, I had to fight at certain times, but it was more my natural inclination was let's, let's all kind of be friends. And, and so I really kind of resonated with, uh, with, with, with Dr. King. And so, um, so I read everything that I could read about him. And then from, from him, I started reading about other people, other prominent figures of the time, Michael Max, Marcus Garvey's. I started kind of just gravitating to all the folks in the different fields. So for me, it was biographies and autobiographies um, when I was really, really young that kind of kind of opened my eyes. Yeah. I love that because I, I am a big biography book. <laughs> on Sundays, I make yeah. all the kids sit down and I'm like, okay, let's look on Netflix and see which bio's on here. And they're like, oh. <laughs> but what was that like? Yeah. One? yeah. Uh, it, I'm sorry, say it again, sir. No, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. I know um, you said that MLK was like a big figure, but MLK isn't a, isn't a, you're a surgeon, right? He isn't a surgeon. So, like, what moved you into. <laughs> The medical aspect of helping people. I know you said your mom and you dedicated your mother, but you know, mom only took you but so far, right? And then there was a piece where you were like, okay, five times, and I'm like, I'm determined. So what was that one thing in you that kept whispering to you, that kept motivating you and telling you, you have to do this, you have to keep going? 
so one of the biggest pieces um, for me, and I'm really big on mentorship. So when I got about 15, 16, uh, my mom started introducing me to surgeons in the hospital. So these were guys that looked like me. And that was very, very important for me because I needed somebody that looked like me that could relate to me on a lot of different levels before I, it was believable. So once I saw uh, my first mentor, Dr. Moncure, once I saw him, uh, in the role. He's the head surgeon, the attending surgeon. He was running the OR. Once I saw him, it was like, oh man, I can, I can do that too. And then he just kind of took me under his arm and, you know, said, Hey, look, man, I'm going to show you the ropes. If you want to do this, if you're serious about this, this is what you're going to have to do. And so at 16, 17, I was in the OR scrubbing in with surgeons that looked like me. It was a very clear goal for me. This wasn't, it was no longer a fairy tale. It was real. And so at that point, I was like, it, it, whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it. And so mm. even as in, in, in business, even as an entrepreneur, um, you have to be committed to do whatever you got to do. If there, if there is something that you're not willing to do, that's going to be the one thing that's going to avoid your business from growing to the next level is if you got something in your head to say, oh, I ain't doing that. Um, that that's the, those are the things that are going to hold you back. Yeah. If you're not willing to do whatever it takes. Your comfort zones will kill you. Absolutely. So I, I, one thing that attracted me to kind of you and your story was the YouTube. As you guys all know, I love digital media, I work in digital media. And for a lot of my clients who are in executive positions or leaders in their own right, a lot of them feel judged because they go onto um, social media or they feel judged if they were to go onto it, I should say. Um, so how did you come in contact with like this whole digital side and start to do YouTube chan a YouTube channel and all that stuff? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I um I kind of avoided it for a really long time. I'll say really long, but probably I didn't get into well, it's, it's like 10 years now, but like um till 06, 07 um is when I, I, I didn't have a Facebook, I didn't have any of that stuff. And so once I logged on and I made a I made a Facebook profile, um for some reason everything I wanted to post was inspirational. Like <laughs> <laughs> Every time I wanted to write something, you know, you read on there, it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this. But for me, I was like, I wanted I wanted to encourage everything I wanted to write was encouraging. And Facebook is actually when I started to embrace that I was a writer um, and, and that I had these I had these messages to share because I had this status and it was what, what came naturally to me. And so uh, it started off with statuses on Facebook, posting pictures of things. And then from there, it was like shoot videos and share and share messages. So for me, mm -hmm. I want to use any, any platform, any opportunity that I can to share my message. And it's funny, when I shoot videos, I imagine my, ki my, my children looking at my videos because I know I'm not going to be here for the rest of my life. So I imagine them looking at my videos and what is the message that I want to pass on? What are, what are the, the, the key things that I want the next generation to know or to take away from my life? And, and that's how I see every, every social media platform. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see it as, Oh, it's something for the young kids. I just see it as a platform and ability for me to share something positive with people. And I'm going to do it as much as I can. Cause that's what I feel like I'm born to do. Yeah, I love that. You're thinking about, again, your legacy. What are you going to leave behind you? Just like all the autobiographies and biographies you were reading. That was, you know, their legacy. That's right. So, yeah, I love that. So how did you take your experience, you know, as a doctor and, you know, the mentorship and all these things that you received? How did you take that now and now incorporate it into your personal development company? Yeah, so for me, my, my, my kind of my vision for my, my business was to, to help people go from, you know, from, from A to B. If there's somewhere that they, that, you know, that they are, are kind of comfortable with and they know that there's another level that they can go to, um, my vision was trying to help them to, to get there, okay? And so uh, I, for me, the majority of work is done here. The majority of work is done in your mind, how you think and how you believe about yourself, number one. Um, and then number two is the tactical kind of kind of practical stuff that I do with coaching with individuals one on one. But for me, my, my experience as a doctor taught me interpersonal skills out of this world, because if there's a barrier in communication when you're in the, when you're in the room with the patient, um, it's going to be very hard for you to treat that patient. 
Now, the mm -hmm. faster you learn how to relate to people, all kind of people, it doesn't matter what culture, language, the faster you learn how to connect and break barriers down, the better physician you're going to become. Um, and, and so for me, in my personal development, in my writing, um, in my speaking, in my coaching, it's all kind of meeting people where they are and then speaking to the aspirations that they have in their life. Yep. And that, that right there is that's a primary tenet of social work is that you meet your client where they are. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. I absolutely love that. And I want to piggyback on like your last comment before. Um, I often tell a lot of my clients that if MLK was still around or Tupac, they would be on social media. They would be utilizing it because this is the way that you touch not only, like you said, not only uh, the individuals that can see you now, but who can see you years from now? Um, just recently, I went to a Michael Jackson show um, where they had like virtual, it was like a virtual reality. What's it called when they have? Like a hologram. A hologram. Yeah. Hologramic. And I'm like, he's on stage, but he's gone. Like he's, he's there. Right. You know, and really thinking about how we can transfer that into our own businesses, right? How can mm -hmm. we create content? How can we write books? How can we create videos that will last well after we're gone, that will basically live on forever? That's the way you really live on forever is that you create this content that can impact a, a nation, a world, you know, long after you're gone. Like you said, um, legacy, right? Your great, 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 great grandchildren are going to look back and be like, oh, man, my granddad was dumb. My great, great granddad was right. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, for, for me, it, you know, when I wake up and when, when I go to bed, it's like this day I, I was here. So when, when, when I leave and when I'm done, you know, the world's going to know that I was here. And it's not this whole ego thing or oh, about me or whatever. It's more of like, no, like I understand the opportunity of life. I understand the opportunity that each day puts in it. And if I'm sleeping and staying in bed all day and I ain't, I'm, I'll get myself ready, I'm wasting the blessing from God that, that life is. And for me, I wake up, I'm ready to rock and roll every single day. There's days where I'm, where, where I'm hurting and I have to remind myself, hey, this is a gift. Don't waste this gift. Don't waste this gift because, hey, tomorrow's not promised. And if I'm setting an example for my family, obviously I'm a family man. I have three children. I'm saying if I open the phone and I'm shooting a video, I believe that somebody's going to watch my video and it's going to change their life. That's the, that's the thought that I had. Yeah. Um, and that and I'm bringing that much value by putting stuff out, uh, putting stuff out online. Yeah. 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 That video piece is, is huge. I mean, it, it's, you know, particularly YouTube because it's crazy to me. I mean, it was so interesting. So I had a um, guy who told me, oh, Ava Laura, you have all these old videos. You need to take them down because they're old. But I said, but people still watch them. I mean, they're three, four years old, but people still watch them. Like I just put it up today and they are getting value from it. So why would I take it down just because it's old? The content is still relevant. Right. Absolutely. I, I, I reshare stuff all the time if I feel like if it's, if it's relevant to people. And then especially when folks reach out, if they reach out on the inbox and they reach out, I'll say, oh, I shot a video on that. Boom, here it is. Um, and, and that's just that's I mean, that's just content, you know, um, you know having having that content out there because content is king. You know, content is king. And, you know, if you stay in your lane, you know, I feel like if you're trying to build some space online, like you, once you find your lane, you stay in your lane and you speak to that lane. Um, you know, every, every single day. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And I'm so glad you didn't listen, Ava, because tell him Thriller is old, uh, Summertime is <laughs> old, the bubble stop him playing Summertime, every single summertime you hear. Right. <laughs> the Fritz and Jazzy Jeff every summertime. So I always, I love to relate business to um, the music business as well, because that, I mean, that content, it lives on continuously. And That's it's true. true. That rhythm is always going to be that rhythm, like you said. Um, so now you're an entrepreneur slash surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about, you know, your courses. You have an event you also do yearly as well, right? Tell us a little bit. Yes. About yes. So, um, so my, I think the core of, of, of me is, 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 is my speaking. So my, my speaking kind of was the platform for my business. So I started, I started a mentoring program initially. Um, mm -hmm. And then, I, you know, people started asking me to go to different schools, different schools, and I started speaking. 
Um, and from that, from that stage, I started to see that there was um, opportunities to impact people, not just from the stage, but after they left. So after people, you know, would see me speak, oh, you got a book, you got a book. And I'm like, oh, I never thought about writing a book, but I guess I should write one, you know. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I wrote a book. So I, I sell books in the personal development space. And then I, my, my courses um are more around so for me my topic is persistence and, and purpose if you will if you had to put two things uh or persisting towards your purpose um and so most of my courses are are speaking to that in some sort of way you know building resilience within yourself um and finding your purpose helping people find their purpose um on the on the business kind of consulting side i found a little niche working with beginner speakers so um speakers that are looking to i get more I, get, I probably get just as many uh, want, want to get in the game speakers as I do uh, undergrad students or high school students that want to go into medical school reaching out to me. So it's probably about equal. Um, and so I work with people and teach them how to, how to make them, basically how to create a platform for themselves online and how to use speaking as a, as a tool. Um, and then my, my event, impact purpose and destiny uh conference i've been doing it this is this will be my fourth year my fourth one um and it's really about helping people to around those three words helping people to uh find where they can make the most impact mm -hmm. um you know and create kind of that that destiny that they want for themselves and so it's a it's a weekend event bring people out um and uh bring a bunch of speakers in and we just kind of dive deep into helping people find their blocks and then getting them committed to move forward uh, to make the steps necessary to change their life. But, you know, for me, if you're not growing, you're dying. And so every, every single day you have to be committed to continuing to grow. And with my, with my products and services that I use in my business, it's just around helping people stay committed to that vision that, that they've been given. Right. Right. And who better to tell them than the person who literally took five times to go to med school? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's so crazy. That's the most common story that I tell because that's the one people are just kind of like, oh, my gosh, like, I can't believe you did that. Like, I tried to get into my master's program twice, and then I, I quit. And I, I think um, for me, that, that really has been the edge, to be honest. Um, that has been my edge in life, if you will, is that I've been the guy that will hit my head on that wall 20 times and won't turn around. Like I've been the guy that will take the no 100 times and won't turn around. That has been the only difference. Haven't been the smartest. No way have I been no, nowhere near the smartest. Um, not privileged, didn't come from money, none of that stuff. It's really just been, I'm going I'm to keep knocking on this door until it opens and I, I'm not counting the times. I'm just waiting. It's only a matter of time. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not counting the years that it's taken me. You know, I've got a goal. I'm continuing to push toward that goal. I'm waking up with purpose every single day because I know the goal I'm going after. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's only a matter of time. That's what I tell you. It's only a matter of time. And I love that. I think it's so important, again, because in this, in this space of, you know, entrepreneurship, but even just talking about legacy and really wanting to make an impact, I mean, there truly, it sounds cliche, but there truly is no such thing as an overnight success. I mean, you look at anyone who has been successful, it really has taken them 10 years. I mean, people used to say 10 years, I think it's like 12 years, 15 years. I mean, it really is who's in the game, staying consistent and doing the work. And eventually you're going to get discovered and you're going to get out there. You're going to have your big break. And then people are going to say, oh, wow, where you been? Well, I've been here all along. Didn't you watch YouTube? <laughs> right. It's, it's, and, and it's funny with, with entrepreneurs, I try to tell them, I'm like, oh, you're trying to build, you know, you're trying to build a big business, but you, you know, you're not, you, you got to be at least willing to put in the amount of time it takes to get a bachelor's degree. <laughs> I true. mean, they ain't even going to give you a bachelor's degree if you ain't put four years That's in. True. Like, you know, if you try, I mean, a doc, it's at That's least 10 point. years, it's at least a decade. So it's like, come on, if you, if you expecting it to pop, you expecting to get you know, uh, whatever you try getting your revenues up to hundred thousand, two hundred thousand million in, in two years. That's how much, it, how long it takes to get an associate. You still in, you still in junior college. I mean, come on. Like, I love that analogy. That is so true. It, you you gotta, I mean, that's how I look at it. So the, the time factor is you gotta put your time in. Yeah. And the, the other piece with that, I would just say is um, nobody's going to be able to take that time away from you. 
So when, when, when you got, when you got those stripes on your arm and, you know, in the, in the military, it's very, you know, it's, it's very obvious, but nobody's going to be able to take that time away from you, but you got to put in the time. And then once you put the time in, nobody's going to be able to take it away from you, you know? So, uh, yeah, so that's how I see it. Love it. I love that. And I want to follow up with your investment of zero will equal zero every time, no matter what number you put up against it, <laughs> no matter what number. Yeah. So, that, that, that's, the, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Whether it's time or money. So bringing this now to a close, tell us a little bit what you see on the frontier for you. What's, what's next? You know, you have these classes, you have courses, you're mm -hmm. teaching medical students as well as entrepreneurs, like <laughs> on the frontier for you. Um, you know, I just want to continue to build my online presence. Okay. So if my, my big vision would be, you know, write a book, write a book a year, continue to do my speaking, um, and then really, really dive in on events. I love events. Um, you know, my impact purpose and destiny event, I want to, I want to spin that off and do more, more personal development or more kind of targeted events. But for me, I like bringing people together with a positive for, for a positive cause. And, the energy at IPDs is crazy. Like people will walk in the door and they'll just kind of not really know what's kind of to expect and okay. But then like by midday, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. And oh, I want to do this. And you know, it's just used to see people light up. And mm -hmm. so much of the world I feel like is on this like want, want, like if I'm excited in the morning, you know, people like, oh, you must, you must just had your coffee. Like, you know, it's got to be some. <laughs> it's true. It, it's it's got to be Why some. Why are you smiling? Excuse. Why are you so happy? Why are you happy? <laughs> what, what's the matter? You know, um, so I'm on this mission to kind of shift that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and kind of shift that and, 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 and kind of encourage people to live a vibrant, uh, lit up life, if I will, and, and help them to shine their light. But, you know, for me, it'll be more events, absolutely more books. And then just continue to work with people to, to have more purpose focused people in, in the world opposed to, uh, you know, just workers that are not excited to go to work every day. Yes. Awesome. How can our viewers, um, how can they find you and how can they find out more about your event? Okay. So, yeah. So just ClarenceLeeJr.com um, and uh, IPD, if you want to get, information about impact purpose and destiny it's just clarenceleejr.com forward slash ipd um so we've got it coming up september 22nd here in 2018 in san diego so i'm super excited we got a really cool space um so just pumped out for people to come come check out the beach come get some come come get some motivation come get some inspiration from some some great speakers and uh and you know kind of leave the, the the event charged um, and, and ready to push forward for your life. Awesome. But I'm awesome. on all social media. I'm on all social media as well. Just Google my name, Clarence, Clarence Lee Jr. You'll find, you'll find me everywhere. Okay. So if you guys need advice, <laughs> if your dog is sick, if your daughter's coughing, you can... <laughs> no, 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 come on now. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's trying to put that medical to uh, work. I know. <laughs> but... <laughs> share with anybody else you know I, look i get it all i get it all on the inboxes i believe you. It, 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 I, oh you a doctor all, hold on now i yeah. get it all on the inbox I'm sure you so do. no <laughs> consult your personal physician if there's any <laughs> medical needs that you have if this is an emergency call 911 do not <laughs> inbox me <laughs> <laughs> but if you would like some motivation, some inspiration, yeah. purpose-driven persistence, then come you on. Contact come it. on over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next week at 9 p.m. Eastern. Good night, everyone.